All right, so we're going to start setting up our atmosphere and our z-depth pass for our scene. Uh, now, by atmosphere, I mean fog. And that fog is going to help us with the separation, add um, just a sense of atmosphere, uh, knock back contrast, and really add that sense of depth that we're missing from the last render we were looking at uh, in the lighting section. So let's see how we can set that up. So our scene here again, all set up. Now, in Max and using V-Ray, we have the Environment and Effects tab options. And what we do is we add right here a V-Ray environment fog. And you can see that I set it up already. Now, this V-Ray environment fog is, is going to set up the atmosphere starting from the camera to the back of the scene. And that's driven, uh, and the parameters are driven by fog color. So we can pick the color of the fog. We can desaturate it, um, brighten it up, darken it down, whatever you like. The fog distance is how far back the fog goes. So we'll play around with that with some, in some of the renders to really see how um, this uh, attribute is driving that fog. Fog height is the height of the fog and how far it goes up. So we can always adjust those settings. And these settings have a lot to do with how big the scale of your scene is, um, the its relative um, position in world space in uh, to zero zero. So the fog really is finicky with that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure um, if the scale is so huge, you know, you might go into some crazy numbers. This scene is really big, so you know, two hundred thousand here is the fog distance that we're going to need with the three hundred fog um, height as well. The sub divs again are the sampling. So the lower it is, the more noise you're going to see. I've kept it low to keep the renders fast, but when you do end up rendering for final, you may want to go up to 32 or 64 samples. Step size here, another thing that we set up is how much um, fog or kind of the gradient transition between the fog as it goes further back in a distance. And we set it up to 20. 20 is plenty. It gives you a nice, smooth um, gradient uh, for your fog as it goes back into, into space. And max steps, again, we can set it to a thousand, how many different steps that it, um, it takes to go back. So the higher the number, the smoother your fog and the longer your render time. So be careful for that. So these are the pretty general attributes of the environment fog. Um, again, you can probably uh, Google it to get exact um, definitions for all of these things and what they do and what they control but that's not the point of this tutorial um, is not actual learning how to use V-Ray but um, showing you guys the different kinds of passes that I use to um, make the painting uh, what it is so environment fog and if we were to do a quick render here and I've already done it but I'm just gonna pull it up you can see the fog in house um, affecting the scene. There's a lot of noise in here right now and that's because of the sampling but we see that it's cutting up shapes and it's creating separation between some of those uh, some of the elements and creating real nice depth in there. Um, we can always push this further back and affect it less and generally I like to do a render like this with fog in the, sh in the shot and one without fog and to do one without fog and this right here environment fog you can active and deactive to turn it off so if we want this if we want the fog as a separate pass without our geo behind it what we need to do is I'm going to just click control A to select all the, ge the geo I'm going to right click here and go V-Ray properties and I'm going to select matte object and I'm going to turn its alpha contribution to zero. So what that means is it will not appear 
in the alpha or in the seam because it's now matted out and it's contributing zero, a negative one, which is black to the alpha. Do that and you'll see the difference here. Save that off and the render should be fairly quick. Actually, we can also turn off our illumination and turn off our lights. We don't need GI for this, global illumination. So it's matted out and it's contributing nothing to the alpha. This is how we can bring, this is a separate layer, and in Photoshop we can now control the color if we need to, the um, intensity, things like that in our scene. So you want to generally, what I do is I do a render like this for final, and a render like this for final. So I have one with fog and without fog. If I need to control, take away um, the fog, I can. Sorry, the render actually would be what I had just closed up, but without the fog. It would be turned off. That was the, I mixed it up there. I would turn off the fog and have this on here and then press render. Kind of like the lighting we did, uh, the render we did for lighting, where there was absolutely no atmosphere, no fog in it. And what that allows me to do is, if there's some areas where I feel like I need to bring back a little bit more information, there's just too much fog, I can use that no fog layer and just paint in where I need it to be to reveal a little bit more. So if I feel like, you know, I could use a little bit more information in this guy and maybe this guy here, I'm going to use my no fog pass and just paint back into it or something in the foreground here, I want more information and less fog, I can use the no fog version and paint back into it. And you'll see what I mean when we jump into the PSD. But I just want to show you guys the the way I render it separately as, a, as its own separate pass and with the geo in it for final. And the reason I keep the fog in with the final image like we just saw is because the way it reacts, I like um, I like everything to be cohesive. I don't like to be fidgeting around with stuff in Photoshop. I like the computer to calculate it the way it's supposed to look and just look all, you know, as one as opposed to, you know, messing it up if, you know, and trying to paint stuff in Photoshop to get it right. So, all right. So that's generally the fog. And you don't need global, uh, in, um, GI for this, global illumination. So I turn it off. Um, you don't even need lights in the scene because I've turned off my lights. There's nothing lighting this. It is just straight fog. So don't have to worry about that. And that's creating active and deactive. And that's the fog layer. Now let's talk about Z-depth. going to lock these up. So the Z-depth is going to allow us to control how that fog is being, um, being distributed in the scene. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So to set up our Z-depth pass, the ZDF pass generally is, it's calculated again from the camera to the end of the scene. And the way it's set up is if we go into our render elements and we click add, there's a V-Ray ZDF pass in here. And that's what this is. And what this requires is to put in the ZDF max, meaning how far is that ZDF going to reach? And we need to know that distance from our camera to the end of the scene where we want the z-depth to end. So the way I usually do that is I try to go into a top down and you can do it even from a top view 
which is kind of orthographic, doesn't really matter. We go to create, helpers here, tape measure, and I'm going to hit it from, I want the Z that to start from here where the camera is, and maybe go a little behind our furthest geo. And that's going to tell me the distance here that it is from camera. So if I want to shoot it a little further, so we get this guy, you know, we're starting to get to 76,000 or 768, no, 76,000. Sorry, I can't read the numbers. Seven, 768,562. It was so tiny, I couldn't see it. All right. So now that we have that number, we're going to jump into Z depth here and the max height, I'm going to round it up to 80,000 just because I don't want those crazy numbers in here and it should reach around there. So generally we want to take that value, the length, and plug it into here. So these are really tiny to see. 768562, we can hit that up and do Seven hundred thousand. Let's say seven six here. Seven hundred sixty thousand. We'll round it. Seven hundred sixty thousand. All right. So now that we have that, we can go back in here. I'm going to press render. We have our render elements active. And we just do our pull down here and you go into Z depth. And you see it like this. So you can see the values and don't be uh, alarmed by all of this being the exact same value. Um, there's tons of information in here, especially if it's a 16 bit or a 32 bit um, EXR. Uh, usually I, I kick out a 16 bit TIFF and a 32-bit EXR. Now, when I have a 32-bit EXR, it stores a lot more information, so it's going to be a lot more smoother transitions. I'll bring that into Nuke, and I'll grade this down to what I need it to be. So if I save this right now, Z-Depth, I'm going to hit TIFF, a gamma override because it's a TIFF. It's going to ask me 16-bit. We'll store the alpha channel as well. Click OK. We'll open up Photoshop. And open up our Z-depth. And we can start pushing and pulling this guy. To get what we want. So say we want to really separate out the foreground. So I'm going to slam this down a little. And actually, I can flatten it out and do it this way. Because there's so much information in here, we can start really pushing and pulling this to get exactly what we need. So if I pull that down, you can see the information that's coming in through here. We can get rid of that guy and really start pushing these values down to start creating some separation. Now, you could break it. But if we were, let's open that again. I'm sorry, my hotkey didn't work there, so I have to go through the menu. So you want to bring that down. Say so I want to bring this down. And using this hand tool really helps.
So you can see the nice separation in here. We're starting to get that separation between the the uh, the objects here, and that's where we can start controlling um, how the fog or certain elements affects the um, the scene. So we can really push and pull and create separation between these because there's so much information stored in here and start adding um, maybe more fog, less fog, depending on um, what we need. And we can use that to drive our fog layer here. It's pretty much a, a mat. If you were to use this and pull in And we'll get into this a lot further. So I can use a curve and use this Z depth to really push where I need it. So if I want to control just that back area, and I don't want anything else to be affected, I can raise that up and I can pull this down to, to really create some separation and affect that guy only. Then take this and you know what, I'll create a new layer. I'll throw it in the mask, paste that in. And then for this per demo, I'll just add some fog. So you can see how it's affecting that area. Every, anything that was white gets affected. And you can see just a subtle hint here and the black, nothing. So it's very, very handy to add subtle shifts of atmosphere. And um, we'll jump into how we can use that as well in more depth in the PSD. And that's how you set up your ZDEF pass. Again, use the tape measure, dis measure the distance from your camera to the last object in your scene. You'll get that number, the length. Plug it into your ZDEF max. Make sure your elements are active. And in your V-Ray frame buffer here, that's your RGB for the, um, the fog alpha and your z-depth pass and you can save these out separately or you can save them all um, save them all out at the same time all right so that is v-ray fog and atmosphere and your z-depth pass and they'll work together hand in hand um, as well as using the z-depth for a wide variety of different uh, purposes and we'll get into that when we jump into the the painting part of it all right, let's jump into other render layers.